the trilogy, you know, you were saving the galaxy from the get-go. So, you know, if do you really feel like you got yeah. time to go and explore? <laughs> yeah. Right, no pressure. <laughs> no pressure. Exactly. It's just like Start saving the galaxy right now. Guys. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So in this one, the stakes are high. Obviously, humanity and the other species that go with you, their fate lies in your hands. Mm. Um, but we all want it to also feel like, no, if I want to just drive over that little uh, mountain over there and see what's on the other side, I shouldn't feel like that. there's anything holding me back from doing that, right? No, we have the game play up right now. Uh, That's so, right. So this is Scott Ryder. This is Scott Ryder, of course, and, and uh, just to sort of set this up a little bit, so we're about an hour and a half into the game at this point. You've already arrived. Uh, people, a lot of people probably already seen the intro. We did the video yeah. uh, a little while ago, the first 15. Um, and you've actually landed on the first planet that was supposed to be your home, and things didn't go so well. But uh, since then, you've also arrived with the Nexus. You've met up with them, and they're sort of like our Citadel. They're sort of, this is where all the arcs are supposed to meet up. And it's this beautiful, shining space station, except, well, you'll see when you play the game, <laughs> maybe things didn't, didn't go quite the way they expected there either. Nice. Um, so now they are in desperate need of you, a Pathfinder, mm -hmm. to go and find them a home. And the place that we're going to go to today, uh, after we explore the, uh, the Tempest a little bit, it was a place that the, the Nexus, while they were waiting for you, they were like, well, we got to do something. We're going to die out here. So let's try to set up a home here, even without a Pathfinder. Let's go try to set up a home on a planet. Looks dangerous. And uh, we're going to find out what happened on that planet today. So Nice. Yeah. Like, one thing I was going to say that I love about this is that, like, you know, the interface is, like, exactly like how the old games are. So you feel familiar, especially if you played yeah. all three. Yeah. And I, I, this is one of my favorite series. So I'm, like, super excited to see <laughs> this. So, yeah. It's awesome. Yeah, I mean, we, we wanted things to feel familiar. when You mm. you know, even if you look at the lines of the, of the Tempest, it's, uh, you know, the architecture inside, it feels like, you know, a spiritual successor to the Normandy, right? Yeah, so yeah. it feels familiar, but it also feels new, fresh. It's more sleek. It was meant to, it's not meant to be a military vessel. It's meant to be an exploration vessel. Um, you know, and of course, the thing that our fans love most, characters, the Tempest is filled with all your squad mates and crew mates. Um, and I don't know, Mike, maybe you want to, uh, let's just go have a chat with yeah. one of them over here. We'll talk to Subi uh, over here. Yeah, our science officer, Subi. Ah, Pathfinder. It's so wonderful to meet you. I'm Dr. Suvi Anwar, assigned to act as liaison between your crew and the Nexus science team. Welcome to my team. I look and forward to working Obviously, with you. just uh, Likewise, touching on it briefly, the, uh, the Paragon and Renegade choices yeah. are gone from Mass Effect now. Why, right. why the decision to go that route and just sort of branch out and give us a little bit more sort of exploring within conversation. No, there's a lot of reasons. I mean, uh, when we uh, started Mass Effect, we were coming off of KOTOR, remember? Yeah. And that was very light side, dark side. Yeah. Sure. Renegade Paragon worked very well in that sort of uh, type of thinking. Uh, but the other thing was, I always felt that Renegade Paragon was something that was very much associated with Shepard, the character themselves, right? Sure. Yeah. And so with Shepard, you know, sort of ending their story, moving on to something different, you know, we wanted to try to get back to some of the RPG roots and that sort of sense of, role-playing the character. I think one of the problems with, you know, um, you know, Renegade Paragon, people loved it, um, but you always kind of knew what your choice was going into a conversation. If you were doing a Renegade play, it's up to the right, up to the right, right? <laughs> so a couple of things we introduced were tones that, you know, allowed you, you to have sort of professional, casual tones or emotional and, and sort of more intelligent um, thinking uh, tones. But then we also introduced sort of more of an agree-disagree so for moments of choice, right? Mm -hmm. So that, um, you know, again, your choice to agree or disagree with someone would change based on the situation or based on the person you're talking to or whatever, right? So you could agree or disagree multiple times at a, you know, switch back and forth. It just keeps you a little bit more engaged, I think. And is that going to drastically change the gameplay if I keep going back and forth with people all the time instead of just yeah, sticking with the course too. of positivity? Yeah, yeah no, uh, we, what we wanted to do is, again, not make it so like you're trying to game the system and make it more like real life, sure. right? Where it's just like, you know, right now, this moment feels like I want to be a bit casual and, and I want to be a bit cocky or something like yeah, that. That's and cool. maybe this one wants to be a bit more professional at this point. Uh, we do have we do kind of track some of that stuff, but it's not so much to make it to gamify it. It's just more so that you can see what your character's like. Okay, awesome. Yep. So here we see a professional and casual choice here. Yep. So I'll take the casual choice. That's a lot of pages <laughs> about dirt. <laughs> oh, you don't have to be kind. I know it's barely more than a summary. You can see some anyway, of the lighter tone there have we as well. To get um, to see Helios. It's why I joined the initiative. The Milky Way was just a corner of a vast universe, a corner of a tiny corner. We are the ones who got to step out of that corner. It's incredible. I guarded a mass relay for some time. I always wanted to see the other side. I totally know what you mean. So will you be joining us on missions? Oh, <laughs> that's funny. Me, out there, with the guns and the danger and everything. And as much as we've been, you know, people commented on the, the lighter tone, 
you don't have to take that path. At least just a lot of people choose to take it because it's it's a lot of fun. You know, mm -hmm. you, you get to be a little bit more cocky or a little bit more whimsical if you yeah. want, sort of thing, right? So here I could flirt with her if I wanted to, but to avoid some spoilers, we probably won't do that this time. Okay. <laughs> yeah, why should that be funny? You seem capable. Oh, I'm flattered, but no. I have no combat experience. i shoot you in the back. <laughs> Not intentionally, of course. At least she's honest. <laughs> true, true. Anyway, I've just received some instructions from the science team, and I really should go over them later then. So what do you think is going to give Ryder that that edge that Shepard had, you know, when people mm. sort of grasped onto that character and they wanted to continue his story. Yep. What is it going to be about Ryder that people are going to be like, yeah, I like, I like the humanity within that character. You know, I think uh, the primary thing was, and this was a big, big thing that we did to sort of set up the difference between Ryder and Shepard is that, you know, Shepard started, they were a hero already, right? Mm. And so the, the trilogy was like going from a hero to a legend, yeah. almost, right? Uh, this really is Ryder, Scott and Sarah's first big adventure. So they actually grow and change throughout the course of this. They start off a bit unsure. You know, they're, they're, they're not natural born leaders. They have to earn that, right? So you actually get to see that progression as you go through it. And I think the nice thing about that is it, it aligns more with the player because the player is new to the game. They're trying to figure everything out and they also get better at everything as they go along. So I think just having that sort of uh, tighter synergy, I think is really gonna uh, help people sort of grab onto them a little bit more. But I think also the, uh, the, the fact that, you know, you can be a little bit lighter with them at times. You know, for the people who want that, it just there's a bit more breadth of, of character in the riders than there was in Shepard. Awesome. Yeah. So, like, when you go to like the different areas, like, say there was like a planet that you possibly went to before, like, will you see like possibly things in the future, like from Shepard's world, kind of, with this game? Um, sorry, I, I, I didn't catch what you meant by that. Oh, like, uh, you, when you go to a different world, like, say if you went in the original Mass Effects, like, will you see like the path with uh, Shepard, like, in this game? Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Well, we, we do have we do have some uh, acknowledgments of Shepard yeah, and yeah, stuff like that throughout okay, the game. Cool. Um, you have to kind of uh, dig around and find them. We like to leave those in there for awesome. people to sort okay, of cool, explore cool, and find. Awesome, cool. uh, you'll actually notice. Well, we didn't. We kind of skipped over it today. But one mm -hmm. of the first things, if you go into the uh, the character customizer, one of the first options yeah. is was your was your Shepard male or female? Because of course we, we need to know if we're going to reference them, were yeah. they male or female? So nice. I mean that was a little hint that cool. you know that will be in there. I think one of the biggest additions, obviously for us was, um, you know, we've got this beautiful representation of the galaxy map, but space itself is really space. It is a level yeah. that we've created for here. So every time you go to a place, we actually see the transition from one planet to another planet or mm -hmm. to an asteroid or to another system. And then of course, when you when you arrive there, if you get out, you can see all of that outside of your window when you're, when you're traveling. So to me, we want to create a more open, free experience. Um, dropping to a, a 2D UI every every time you want to travel between places kind of takes you out of that sense of immersion sure, of, yeah. no, I'm in a giant space yeah. adventure, right? Mm. So are we still going to have that random, uh, I was going to say, there's going to be anomaly stuff? And yeah. like, then it just <laughs> popped up. So like, yeah, yeah, there right you go. Yeah. Right there. Look at that. So yeah. I'm going to shoot a probe at that one. Yeah. Oh, I love it. Yeah. I found an asteroid. The, the great thing about, uh, you know, again, I said it's about exploration. We wanted to, that, that really, that one sort of theme it permeates everything that we try to do in Mass Effect Andromeda. So everything from space to the characters, the roles that you're playing, combat, all the gameplay. And so we really want you to feel like you're exploring space and discovering things here. So sometimes, you know, if you find an asteroid, like Mike did, um, you know, you're finding resources and that'll help you along, but you can also find, you know, key elements to a plot or you can just find lore. We always know that people just love to just, you know, learn about the new, the new uh, uh, galaxy that they're in. Sure. So uh, when finding resources, how is that going to play out uh, for my character? Why am I finding and discovering all these resources? Or why would I want to go seek them out? Yeah. yeah, exactly. I think it's a really good question. You know, I think uh, I talked about exploration, but the other sort of uh, tension that we wanted to put on that was a sense of uh, survival, right? Um, not just for uh, humanity in, in Andromeda, obviously that, but also just that, you know, you didn't arrive in a place much like, you know, in the, in the trilogy arrived, you were given a ship, you're part of an organization. There was all of these, all of these resources that you had at your disposal, and that was fantastic. But in this one, what we want to create is a sense of no, there really isn't much out there until you allow it to be out there. So that means that you know, if, as you're looking for things, people aren't going to say, "Oh yeah, here, here's a whole bunch of resources for you." They'll be like, "No, you want to, you want to build a new gun? You're going to have to go find the stuff to build a new gun, then find someone to build a gun for you, and then build the gun, right? Nice. Or do it yourself, okay. or cool, do it yourself cool. if you want to do the crafting, right? So." Mm. Um, to me, I think that's the driving force for it. Nice. So let's go ahead and land on Eos then. 
um, as I got to EOS first, I scanned it. There's a whole bunch of information that came up with EOS yep. about the available minerals, the types of things, the viability relative to it. It seems um, like a desert world with significant resources. Yeah, it doesn't. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's, it's I'm not different. just reading that off the text right yeah. there. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And loadouts. Yep, and as soon, oh, as, you, nice. as soon as you go to land on a planet, of course, and bring up the loadouts, allow mm -hmm. you to change your weapons, uh, armor, uh, bring consumables with you, and of course, choose the squad that you're going to take down. And in the future, something else. Okay. Which no. we'll find out. Right. We'll, so we'll, we'll cover yeah. that during this, <laughs> yeah. this very uh, session, if we get far enough. So I, I see some familiar pilot. races. Yeah. Yes, Solarian. Mm -hmm. Are you guys going to be other, maybe, I mean, I don't know if it's a spoiler, are you guys going to be introducing any new races, or are we going to see some races that are familiar from the Mass Effect trilogy previously? Um, you mean today? But it's very uh, or just like, or just in, general. in general. general. Yeah. Are going to see mean, some new things? Yeah, we're definitely going to see some new things. We've already shown the Ket. Um, we've, we've seen little snippets of the Remnant. Uh, they're sort of like a, a, a robot race that's sort of been left behind, as you might have guessed, a Remnant. <laughs> um, and uh, they're actually guarding a lot of things here. Uh, in the Milky Way that are important for you to discover. And are there going to be sort of worlds to explore off the beaten path? Like, are there going to be like, oh, I can come across a random planet on this galaxy that I was just searching for? doesn't really play into the main story at all, but I can just explore random planets? Um, there, we, have a couple of, we have a couple of planets that are a little bit more optional than others, but what we try to do is always at least touch the planets with the critical path so you had a, had a reason to go to them and at least experience them once. But a lot of times the critical path Kind of like I said, you're there for a little bit, and then it, it can take you away, and then it's up to you. Well, do I want to stay and explore this planet, or do I want to, you know, follow that main storyline and just see what happens there? And you know, for the first time ever, we're also allowing you to continue exploring all of those planets after the critical story oh, actually okay, ends. Cool. So you you don't have to do everything right up front. You can kind of be like, yeah, I just wanted to see the story, and I'll come back to this later. Although, you know. There are some things that you could do along the critical path and in the in the exploration that would help you in the in the Makes final sense. moments of the critical yeah. path. So, so if you want to just run and gun gung ho, like I'm going to get straight to the end. Yep. But if you explore more, different things might happen. That's right. Exactly. We want to have that. The, we want like, have that sense of reactivity. Yeah, I do love like the dialogue that's happening while going into the next like planet. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Set us down at this nav point. One of the one of the things we really wanted to sort of draw out, certainly for the first time you land on each world, was that sense of. Okay, well, the promise is exploration. You went to a new galaxy, and what would people be feeling? What would they be thinking when they do that? And again, you know, uh, this is something I feel that we at Bioware and the Mass Effect trilogy really focus on, which is using characters to sort of bring those moments out. It's, you know, beautiful visual effects and explosions, all that is fantastic. But I want to care about it, and I want to see other people and what, what they're reacting to and, and how they're dealing with the situations. Like, for instance, here, um, we've landed on EOS, we've talked over some of the dialogue, but. This is a failed site, so people tried to make a new life living here, and now we don't even know what happened to them, and it's up to you to go and discover what's going on in this, in this uh, abandoned site. Now, how about safe the other guys are? Helmets. <laughs> that's what I was just about to say. No, yeah, that's right. I don't need them. Yeah. Like, she can breathe yeah. this air. Yeah, we should, call, we should call out that that is an option that you can set. Okay. You, can, you can actually have their helmets on all the time or often conversations. Like, okay, Ryder's, yeah. Ryder's not taking any risks. He's exactly. like, you know what? Right. I'm going to wear my helmet. That's right. Hey, man, that's how you get, that's how you get to be the Pathfinder. Yeah. Don't, don't breathe that air. Um, but yeah, so uh, here's, here's our map. I don't know if you want to talk about that, Mike. Well, I mean, we just landed here. Yep. Um, <laughs> The size of the space is massive relative yeah. to where we landed. So we've got a lot of exploring to do, a lot of adventuring to do. Yep. But first, we're trying to find out what happened to the settlement. And one of the things we want to do uh, consciously on most of the planets, we actually want you to land on foot. Like really get that get that sense of feet on the ground before you race off and you know and get in your nomad, uh, which we actually haven't got here yet. But um, just because you know there's always you, you want that opportunity to discover what is this planet about. We can tell you what it is about, I guess, in a in a cutscene. But I'd rather you explore in this area, sure. learn what's the story of this world, what's the story of the people that are on it, and then figure out which path you want to take because it, things after this opening area just open up you can go wherever you want right and there's oh look at that yeah and yeah. it's just like so free it feels great oh the 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 new locomotion honestly is one of the the biggest advancements we've done oh it looks so good yep uh uh we oh. have we have the boost we have the jump uh we have a you know you can combine them together and then you have the hover which i love you can hover while you're actually tight aiming mm -hmm. um and as you get more skill with it that's it's uh it's a lot of fun to play with those uh, techniques and it just allows you to get wherever you want, right? Like, I mean, it wasn't that long ago that, you know, uh, in the trilogy, you'd be able to walk up those stairs, but everything else was pretty much 
off off limits to you because yeah. you know we, there was no jump and no movement. But you can climb up on the roof if you want, leap over things. Basically, the just power go of the you Pathfinder. Want. Yeah, the power of the Pathfinder. Shepard, stuff. You couldn't jump. <laughs> That's right, <laughs> bro. Yeah. Step up your game. That's right. It Commander would be, would be much of a Pathfinder if you, you had to just always follow one path, right? Yeah. Um, this is a great little. Uh, it just flashed very quickly there, but uh, I'll talk about is the search mechanic that we have. Again, in the in the sort of I, this sort of theme of exploration, we don't always want to point you directly to something. We'll actually point you in the general direction, and then all of a sudden you get this little search indicator that kind of tells you as you're getting closer. Kind of a hot cold mechanic as you get near it. Uh, several of the plots use that just to encourage exploration again, encourage you to actually look around in the world and not just follow a, a specific dot in the, on the UI. That's always cool. We suffered our first death today. And so, yeah, go, go ahead. ahead. Well, I was just going to say, you know, one of the things, even in this away. opening area, His which is desolate and, and, and you know, people are missing and they, they, they obviously something terrible has happened here, we filled it with lore, right? And I think that's one of the things, you know, really done a lot of world building this so that you really get a Got sense of lucky. what happened to these people when you're here. There's a great little thing that happens later on. I don't know if we'll see it today, but where you can actually sort of use your scanner to sort of scan the past and sort of bring up recordings of what people were doing oh, nice. when they were still living here, and you can kind of learn about you know their plight as they were here, and then where some of the people ended up. And yeah, there's this the scanner. It's a good example of it. Um, if you continue to scan so you'll notice uh, right there at the bottom, uh, you got ten points. There's three different points that you can get when you scan something. So scanning actually is tied into our research and development. So uh, basically, there's a there's, in order to craft something, what you want to do is have a blueprint. And those blueprints you can get from do, finishing a quest. Uh, you might just find it as loot. You could buy it at a store. But the other way you can do it is you can actually make those blueprints yourself. But in order to do that, you need research points. Oh, so okay. as you go through and you scan things, you actually get research points that you can use to create blueprints. That is cool. And the reason there were three at the bottom is because we, there are three different tech tiers. There's the old Milky Way tech tier, so a lot of the guns and weapons that you're familiar with. Nice. Then there's the Helios cluster ones. But then there's a third one, which we haven't quite got to yet, but it's the Remnant. And so you get to, and each of those has different perks and benefits as you follow those different paths if you want to examine them. And a lot of the, you know, the, you know, sort of uh, best uh, sort of crafting uh, items that you want, you actually have to use this mechanic to do. Although you can still find those items in the world yeah. or buy them if you want. But if you really, if you really want to have clear access to them, then you're going to want to craft them. Oh, uh, you went bye bye. Did you guys see what that was? Show them again. Zoom in on that. Blastos. Oh, Blastos. <laughs> yeah? Come nice. on. A little nod to the... Uh, it's nice to know that Blastos can make it all the way to a exactly. drama, right? <laughs> They're like Twinkies. That's right. It's like the no, it's never a right treat. It'll be, That's it'll, right. be, it'll be around forever. That's well, right. what I was going to ask was... Uh, you mentioned like the lore within the world, like yep. the uh, previous Mass Effect games. We had the lore to play off of with two and three, yep. playing off the first one, recreating an entire new galaxy's right. worth of information. Yeah. Like how, how much work goes into something like that? I mean, yeah. it's, it's been a while since we've seen a Mass Effect game. Yeah, yeah. five so years. Yeah. Five years yeah. worth of work. That's how long. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, like, what is that like for you guys getting to you know create an entire lore behind a game that could potentially hopefully see sequels in the future? Yeah. Yeah. I mean. Honestly, that was one of the key things in going to Andromeda, I think, was, you know, part of the magic of the first Mass Effect was there was there was no Mass Effect. We were inventing it as we went. And yeah. I think a lot of the magic came from us being able to look forward and just imagine what would be possible. And obviously part of that was we were gonna we were gonna commit to a trilogy. So as we did two and three, you know, we were more a bit more on the rails. We were still a lot of imagining and reacting to the fans and things like that in two and three. But this was our opportunity to really start over. So, um, you know, first things first, we carried over as much of the lore as we could that made sense into into Andromeda. But then we just started building on top of that, and and uh, I think that freedom uh, for the developers and for the writers and the, and the world builders is part of what you know make will make Andromeda feel very fresh and new, right? That means the look at this place. It's a wasteland. The radiation in Eos' atmosphere makes it difficult to cultivate life. Like even radiation. looking like in the Our horizon, you just see how big right? this world is. It's oh so yeah, yeah. Amazing. Well, we'll 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 get you to a vantage point later where you can see it even better. Nice. They're actually what talking we about outside, so one of the new important mechanics. Uh, they're advice. talking about radiation. So a lot of the worlds that you go to will have hazards on them. Now some of them, like this planet, has a global hazard, and, and uh, there's sort of a perimeter around this area that's set up to give keep it safe. We don't want to you know, uh, make it too difficult for the player right off the bat. But as you explore out on this planet, it's radiation. And what happens is you have a life support. And whether you're in the Nomad or you're out on your own, that life support will slowly go down. So you need to find safe zones in order to recharge your Even life support. Even if you're in the Nomad? Even if you're in the Nomad. It oh, goes okay. down slower if you're in the Nomad. It, it provides an extra layer. 
Uh, but if the Nomad's life support runs out, it blows up and you die, and that's terrible. So you don't want that to ever happen. Um, but uh, we also have also localized hazards. So a lot of times you'll be going through, and maybe there's just like a, a pool of acid or something like that, and that'll take your life support down like almost immediately. So just another sort of sense of survival out there, and just try to keep you aware that the you know the world isn't necessarily a friendly place, uh, <laughs> exactly. or these worlds aren't. Yeah. But I mean, introducing something like the jump pack, yeah. you know, it's like, that adds a level of verticality that wasn't yeah. really in previous Mass Effect games exactly. before. Yeah. How does that change up the, the way you have to approach combat? Oh, it, combat, level design, everything, like it, it really changed uh, all of those things. Um, even just the metrics for everything, right? Because all of a sudden, you know, if you don't want a player to be able to get somewhere, well, that's a lot different than, yeah. than in the past, I can right? hit this rock if I jump here and exactly. jump over here and jetpack over there, yeah, I can make yeah. it. And, and honestly, I can't wait. I mean. We, we do as much testing as we can, but the players are going to get to places we didn't even know were possible, I'm sure, with this stuff, <laughs> which is awesome. That's fun. We'll wait and see what happens that, with that. But, um, yeah, I think, um, you know, when you look at all of the locomotion that we have, the boosts and the jumps, um, it, it makes combat feel much more fluid and dynamic than we've ever had before. And, of course, we've also got the uh, procedural uh, cover system. So pretty much anything that's out there, you can take cover behind, and it's not modal. So you just slide into it and slide out of it. Uh, it takes a little bit of getting used to, I find. Most people, you know, especially if they're really familiar yeah. with the trilogy. Yeah, snap cover. Yeah, yeah. yeah they're just like, <laughs> exactly. wait, wait, this doesn't work the way I thought. But uh, the nice thing is, like, this is for me, and I've seen other people do this. Um, when you first start playing, you stick to cover quite a bit yep. because, okay, I gotta figure this out. But now you're not kind of stuck to it anymore. Um, and as you get as you get a bit better, you find yourself just kind of running into combats and doing crazy stuff and uh, not using the cover that much, and then you up it to hardcore insanity, and you're back in cover again. <laughs> <laughs> See, now I'm really curious about, like, the enemies. Like, our, well, we don't want to spoil it, but, like, I'm hoping that something will pop out so we can see some action. Oh, yeah, there's, there's, there's going to be some action here. Okay, cool. And yeah, we're cool. taking it slow. We're taking it slow so we can look around and take a look at some of the stuff here. But, uh, but I do look, like, there's so much you can explore in here, which is awesome. Oh, yeah, and, and we're, we're actually kind of just getting the, uh, the critical path elements into this out of the way, but all the buildings in there are exploring. Horrible, although yeah. some of them need the power to come on before you can actually explore them. Um, are you up there? I like what happens when you run up here. Or really, Ryder. You got <laughs> Kylo, our pilot, saying, "What are you doing, running on my ship?" <laughs> you got, you know, taking yeah. pride in his ship. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody just True. walking all over his ship? <laughs> yep. Just coming and, out of here. And this is the first sort of open world world that you get to land on. And so we are, we do gate things a little bit with this. We want to teach you a few things on it. Uh, but all the other worlds that you land on, you really are, it is just free form. Like you land, just go do what you want if you yes. want. Yeah. It's like, look, yeah, we did land. There's the ship. Yeah. It is. It's parked right there out in front. Yeah. Yeah. So you guys want to see a little bit of combat. Mike's going to show us a bit here. All right. Here we go. Here get we down go. through the nitty green. Yeah. Moving out. Of course, you can still give your squad commands like you okay. could before. Move nice. them in different locations. You can. Le with the left and right D-pad, you can send them individually, or if you push up on the D-pad, you send them both at the same time, either to a position or to attack. And uh, hopefully we'll see some of Cora's moves. She's got some cool moves. Uh, these dropships are a real uh, pain in the butt. You'll see them all throughout the uh, the game. Now, so these guys, these are the Ket. Um, one of the interesting things is that while we find them here in Andromeda, uh, they're not actually native to this area. So that's one of the little mysteries that we find, that they're here oh. as invaders themselves. Where are Which they from? Yeah. Where are they from? Where exactly. Where they come from? Exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, and you see a lot of the, uh, um, you know, uh, he's got a concussive sod there. You see a lot more physics reactivity yeah. on the characters, and that just ties in well. When you when you, you know, when we move a little bit further in um, to the game, you've got, you know, three powers at once, and you're using a lot of biotics. Guys are flying in every which direction. Oh, man. Um, oh, yeah. And you can see he's, he's nailing him with the headshots there. Uh, Liam's down. So this, this is similar to our, our multiplayer before. So. What are you doing, bro? Yeah. Come on. <laughs> yeah, it's our first battle. He's like, oh, I wasn't expecting it. Yeah. <laughs> right or help. Yeah. Again, that's why you're the Pathfinder. Yeah. Right? You know, yeah. You gotta, you gotta, that's why maybe if he was wearing his helmet, yeah. uh, true. it would have exactly. been a little safe. Exactly. <laughs> Should have thought of think that. about these things when you're going right. into battle. Like, maybe I should throw this on as just a little extra protector. Yeah. Maybe it's just like a helmet. So, uh, yeah, basically what, we, what we've what we learned so far, this, as far from a story perspective, is that um, this guy had shut down the power. This uh, down guy we're about to meet here. Sure. Use the power relay. Hell, take whatever you like. But he was turning we're off the power so he wouldn't draw the, the cat, who are quite uh, prolific on this planet. All right. Shuttles aren't fun in these winds. You need wheels. I think they kept a little something in storage. Oh, did they? Mm-hmm. I'll take another look around the outpost. 
And just finding it won't be enough. Hope you're smarter than we were. We're heading to our shuttle. Keep this up. Maybe next time we'll find more than just salvage around here. Giving them Don't hope. You've got yeah. we can One pathfinder at a time. That's right. Oh. And so he's he's actually a, uh, a store. So every once in a while scattered throughout the world so you can find stores and, and talk to people, trade things. Nice. Uh, one of the interesting things we've done is that uh, he was mentioning salvage. So obviously you go to a new galaxy, credits don't mean that much except for maybe the people that are on the Nexus and stuff like that. So really what most of the the uh, you know funds that you find are by finding salvage, and then whenever you get to a store, you can actually just trade those that salvage. And just it's a bit more of an in fiction, like you know we wouldn't all be running around finding credits everywhere. So. Yeah, sure. <laughs> right. yeah. These people just keep leaving all their money all over <laughs> the place. Yeah. Yeah. So nice of you. It's, it's funny how the cat have the exact same uh, yeah, currency right. system as we do. Yeah, we, we wanted to avoid things like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. So Mike's now gonna go uh, see what it takes to find our nomad. Uh, what was one of, the, one of the other new things you saw there? That was actually uh, some loot. Uh, enemies now drop loot. Um, oh, okay. So it's actually, uh, as you go through, uh, you know, uh, a lot of the combats and stuff like that, uh, a lot of times it's actually important to find stuff as you're going. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things we've done with our loadout system is if you find something you want to equip it, you, want, you equip it when you find it, right? Um, so it's important that, you know, you pay attention when your loot comes up oh, so you okay. know to equip it then. Yep. There is obviously a, there's going to be a way to equip it later on. <laughs> oh yeah, so you'd be like, you got this sweet weapon. Did you equip it? Nope, it's gone. <laughs> yeah, that's, right. <laughs> that's right. It's yeah, that we, we we really believe in consequence yeah. in the match. Yeah. Yeah. You, know, you have a decision to make. With one chance. That's right. Bro, do you one take chance. this no. one or this one? No. Okay, let's clear that up. No. So, uh, like you saw when you landed, you can change your loadout. There's a place on the uh, Tempest itself where you can do your loadouts whenever you want. Okay. And in about uh, you know three or four minutes here, we're going to show you Forward Stations, which is another place on planets. Uh, when you're out here, we you can change your loadout as well. Go slow. For sure. We'll follow your lead. A warning. Radiation levels beyond the perimeter of Site 1 are well above acceptable limits. You cannot proceed without additional protection. So if that structure could make a difference here, well, that would be really good. Sounds Come like on. it would be. We better find that vehicle <laughs> right. you mentioned. All right, now let's find the Nomad. Yeah. Uh, okay. Viability. So, viability is... Um, is uh, one of the key mechanics uh, when you're going to all these planets. So we have two types of viability. We have uh, what we call AVP, which is Andromeda viability. And so almost anything you do, uh, whether I thought it was aliens versus predator for a second. I'm like, what? I know, I know. Crossover. I, know. I keep telling people it was the least worst three-letter acronym we came up with. There was a lot of really bad ones, but and in the end, that's what we went with. But so anything you do, whether it's critical path story moments, whether it's out here exploring, anything like that, will give you AVP over time. Um, and as you do that, you actually you unlock uh, the ability to sort of wake up uh, people from cryosleep. Um, and that starts to populate the nexus, but it also gives you perks as you do it. So you, and you get to choose, do I want to wake up military people? Do I want to wake up scientific people? Do I want to wake up uh, more trades-oriented people? And you can choose perks in that. So, and it kind of happens on a linear scale as you go throughout the game as you're doing that. So that's AVP. But then each planet itself also has its own viability that you're trying to do. And that's important because until a planet reaches a certain viability, viability level, uh, you can't do much on it. So you couldn't, for instance, put down an outpost on it. But that is one of the things that eventually, if we get the viability high enough here on EOS, we can bring down an outpost, a whole new little area with new quests and new people in it, stores and other things that you can do. Uh, and it actually starts to change the way the world uh, appears and what you can do on it. So it adds even more to a world that you potentially already cleared out. That's right, yep, exactly. And uh, a lot of times, um, also just takes you out, you know, the quest will take you out to places where you haven't necessarily gone before. Right. Nice. More of a reason to explore more yeah. of the planet. Mm -hmm. yep. Yep. And obviously, besides sort of like the mission stuff and the stuff that you're sent out to do, there's more to ex like find and discover yeah. when you're searching around these planets. Oh, totally. I mean, uh, one of the one of the really important things is, uh, I mean, this is your first one, so again, there's a lot of tutorial here, and this one's very much framed around the sort of idea of of humanity's first settlement. Uh, but the other worlds you go to, many of them are alien worlds, and there's already either aliens there or other people situated there. They all have their own story and their own unique narrative. And a lot of them even have like a main quest line that goes through them. Actually, all of them have a main quest line that goes through them uh, with a, usually a, an important decision. So a lot of times you can just say, you know what, tonight I'm going to do this planet, you know, and actually maybe tonight's aggressive. It might be today and tomorrow I'm going to do this <laughs> planet. Um, but, you know, you can actually follow the story throughout it. Just get lost in that one world and enjoy it, you know, uh, and just focus on everything there. And all the story is interwoven. Um, and, uh, you know, unlike, you know, uh, Aspect 1, where the, the worlds are beautiful, but they were a bit barren. 
um, you know, we've really threaded a lot of content throughout these, and, and I think that's a, actually an important point, which is, you know, the game isn't just bigger, um, you know, from a footprint size. We've actually put a lot of content in here. I was looking at the stats actually recently from Mass Effect 3. I think we had something like uh, 670 unique characters, you know, that would speak to you. Yeah. In Mass Effect 3, we've got over 1,200 oh in this one. <laughs> and when you look at the di <laughs> this, the dialogue options, yeah. we're basically the equi equivalent of Mass Effect 2 and 3 put together. Wow. Right. That is so, amazing. so it's not just about hey, we created these big, vast open areas. We actually populated it with story as yeah. well and, and narrative. That's so cool. So to get to the Nomad, we had to call down a forward station because we have no codes. So forward stations, Mac, I don't know if you want to talk about this. Forward station deployment. That's cool. Yeah. Nice. So these things are all sort of hovering in orbit, waiting for you to uh, to discover locations as you go through the world, and they're they're really critical because one of the things you'll notice when you're in them, we're already safe here, but it, that little ring there, if it was in a hazard zone, that would protect you and allow your your life support to recharge as well for you oh, okay. and the Normandy, so or you and the uh, Nomad, so uh, that would allow you to sort of come in here and find a little bit of a safe zone. Um, it could, if you lose the Nomad or you're far away from it, you can also call the Nomad to you. Um, it also replenishes your stores, your health, and your, your ammo. Nice. Um, but then you, it's also got, uh, I love these, they've got these little sort of terminals that you can access. And as you find more of them, it tells you an uh, kind of ongoing sort of story of what you're discovering about the world, usually from a, like a geological or um, uh, weather perspective sort of thing of what you're discovering there. Um, and then, of course, uh, it'll also let you change your loadout, which is what we were talking about before. Oh, so nice, if nice. Mike wanted to change his loadout here, he could do it. He could also change who, who's with him. You know, it's like, oh no, you know, I actually want to take uh, uh, Vetra with me now. Okay. You can change it right cool. here. Cool. Awesome. Uh, and one of the things that we just saw, yep. uh, hopefully we can touch back on it after. Yeah, I was wondering oh. what was in there. Oh, oh <laughs> what's in there? Oh. There it is. Nice, nice. Nice little reveal. Mm -hmm. Scoot! <laughs> Six wheel nomad. And this thing nice. is a lot of fun to drive. Mm -hmm. Sorry, somebody was saying something. Oh, yeah, no, uh, yeah. I was just talking about the upgrades for your character. Right. It, it looked. Uh, yeah, to the skills that then. Yep. So I think it's, it's really important, and we've, we've talked about this uh, before, but, it, I, you know, it, it, this is probably one of the biggest changes to the way, you know, sort of you, you level up your characters. In the past, you would have chosen, I want to be a vanguard the right branches. at the beginning. I see branches. Yeah, I see, yeah, yeah, I see that's that. That's right. Uh, or I, want to, or I want, to, want to be a soldier, right? Uh, in this game, all of the powers are available to everybody at any time. Oh. So you just choose. And then what you do afterwards is after you've chosen which powers you want, we have uh, what we call profiles. And the profiles roughly map to those different classes, but they're more about giving you perks based off of your choices as opposed to predefining which path you should take, right? Um, so in this case, uh, Mike's going to add incinerate and let's see what happens. Yeah, because lighting things on fire. That's right. <laughs> Always a smart Always idea. Fun. True. Yep. True. And when he confirms it, there you go. So you can see he's still got the uh, uh, soldier. Uh, most of his points right now are in, in, in combat, so the soldier profile is the one that's available to him. But if he were to put more points into tech skills, then we'd start to see other other profiles become available. If you put a, if you put them, you know, if if you want to go into uh, the biotic skills, his vanguard profile will come out. Come okay. up. Can you just do that at any time, or mm -hmm. do you have to do a certain thing before you can? No, nope. as I long know. as you have three skill points. So oh. here's the infiltrator, for example. If yep. I did three in combat. Uh, three in soldier, rather, and three in yep. tech. Yep. Oh, it's got a little unlock thing at the yep. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what'll happen is it'll actually tell you when, when you have new uh, skills unlocked, and then as you unlock skills, it'll tell you when you get new new profiles unlocked as well. Nice. Yeah. So it's much more it's much more free form, and it's fun. I, I mean, watching people play it, uh, some people are of the mind that they just they 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 choose three powers and they just master those three powers. Yeah. And that's all they do. But there's other people who are just like, no, I'm all over the map. I want to try all these different things. Yeah. And you you can do that if you want. We even uh, the explorer profile is kind of designed for those people. It's like if you just have a little bit and everything, you get you still get your perks. Yeah. Nice. Because I remember yep. the first Mass Effect game had there was a lot of choices you could make mm. to and which you wanted to upgrade. And yep. by the third one, they kind of like, oh, we're just gonna narrow it down to sort of this. Yeah. And maybe you can open up something else. But yep. this is just like, here's everything. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Boom. There you go. That's right. Choose your path, yeah. Pathfinder. Yeah. That's right. Exactly. And there are certain there are certain um, uh, skills skills. Uh, uh, that aren't available until you put certain, certain amount of points into other things. So that not everything is there, but you can preview it and see what's there. Okay. So you can kind of get a sense of which path you might want to head down. Yeah. So I think I found a crafting area. Do research yeah. and development. Crafting? Yep. Yeah, so we talked about that before. Take some salvage. Yeah. Is so there an item limit, first thing? There is a, uh, you have an item limit. 
Um, you can see there, 9 out of 50. Oh, okay. You can see it at the top left there. Mm. Um, so you start with that. Uh, remember I mentioned the cryopod perks earlier, so waking people up, your AVP. One of the thing, one of the perks you can do there is to increase your, your item limit if nice. you, you want to increase that. Um, things like things like salvage credits, um, some uh, some of the sort of materials they don't take up room. Oh, they, um, do they stack on top of each other? So yep, like, they stack on oh each other, but they also don't take up room at all. Like oh, we, nice. just, we just say they don't. Uh, but it's more things like uh, things that you could buy and sell at a store, like uh, your weapons, your armor, uh, blueprints, things like that. So. Uh, on the left side, this is what we were talking about before. If you want to go in there, Mike, this is the research side of things. So if you see at the top there, there's three different tech tiers. We're in the we're in the Andromeda one, then we went to the Helios one, and then there's a mysterious third one, which isn't available yet because we're about to learn about that yeah. sooner. Uh, you can see that Mike's already scanned enough uh, sort of Milky Way things. He has 50 points. There's probably not much you can do with 50 points at this point. Um, but once you once you get enough of those, you can go in. Let's say you want to build one of those, clicks on it, oh. and you'll see the, you'll see how many tiers there are of this. So if you want to pick one, there you go. Oh, wow. There's wow. actually five sick. five tiers. So the weapons actually evolve over time. So does the gear. It evolves over time. Um, so it kind of keeps pace with your progression as you go. Um, but like I said, he doesn't really have enough points here. And this is just to build a blueprint for sort of a special item. If he wanted to actually just build something and craft something right now, uh, what we could do is, oh, you're going to do an augment. Nice. Yeah, I'll research yeah. an augment here. Good for you. Aerial talk. lubrication, <laughs> uh, very uh. highly <laughs> touted in the world of Andromeda. <laughs> the cool thing about augments, actually, are you remember mods from from the trilogy, like yeah. you, weapons, certain weapons and armor, allow you to put mods in them that so you can take in and out, and they just give it an extra bonus. Mm -hmm. An augment is something that you can put in only when you craft it that one time, but usually they're quite powerful. So some of them will, like one of my favorites, is you can basically turn all your projectiles into heat-seeking plasma. So imagine the sniper rifle that always wow. hits. Right, but you can. <laughs> but but here is Check, where please. yes. Yep. But here is where the choice comes in. Is that uh, when you craft that uh, augment, it gives you one version of it, and it gives you the ability to now find that augmentation in the world. But you can never craft it again. Oh. So you want to make sure you use it, you know, yeah. Yeah, appropriately. So you can't yeah. just have heat seeking everything. Yeah, yeah. And and do I want to put it on my level one? Or my level two pistol, or do I want to save this augment maybe and put it on a level five later on? Oh, I don't okay. Know, right. right. So now you guys are getting tricky. <laughs> yeah, we're getting I tricky. was like, I'm going to have heat-seeking level one sniper Everything. rifles that yep. are just never going to miss. <laughs> That's right. Let me get that level five. It's like, can't heat-seek. <laughs> so on the, right, on the right side here, uh, once you get into the development side, these are all the blueprints that you either have or could have in the future. Um, and um, some of the ones that you can build. So I think uh, it looks like you've got about four that you could probably build right now, or six uh, on the left-hand side there. So those are the ones that we actually have enough materials for. And this is where materials become important. So if you see at the bottom there, it calls out the different materials you need. If you, if you hit uh, uh, triangle there, or there, it'll actually give you a little bit more detail mm -hmm. on the weapon that you, you're going to uh, uh, check out, if you want. Or, uh, sorry, why. Yep. Um, but yeah, and, and then um, when he goes to create it, he can actually rename it. What? And this is, oh, this, is, wow. this is really helpful if you put an augment in it. I find yeah. anyway because I, I want to go. Well, this is my heat-seeking plasma mm -hmm. matic. It's my face melter sniper oh, rifle. Wow. Right. Or that you could give it something cool. more creative than I just <laughs> did. Yeah. <laughs> but, I thought right. face melter was pretty awesome. Yep. <laughs> so I just crafted the matic then. There you go. And nice. you got skills and you just leveled up. So he's actually going to be able to scale up here if he wants. Just like that. Boom. And maybe we'll maybe we'll open up. A, yeah, I bet you if you do this, you'll be able to open up a new profile as well, which would be great. Oh. So close. Oh, you've got oh. it. You, you should have enough. It should yeah. be three points in each. Let's see. Back out. Yes. Boom. There we go. There okay. you go. Yeah. Infiltrator oh. unlocked. Infiltrator. Right? So now if he goes over, and you can see the difference between the combat and the, the soldier and the infiltrator perk there. Right? Weapon accuracy, weapon stability. Yes. Yeah. Now, one of the one of the other interesting things in here, uh, it, it doesn't won't show off very well at the opening of the game here, but if you bring out, uh, uh, if you go back into that, Mike, we can show them how you can set up favorites, right? So if you go in here, if you... Uh, yeah, you just hit the main menu there, you'll go into favorites. So what you can do is you can actually take your three current powers and your current profile that you've got and map them to a favorite, right? Oh. And you can do that up to four times throughout uh, there. So right now that's his current one. And then when you're playing the game, you know, when you, you, just, you just quickly tap to bring up your weapon wheel, one more tap, you can actually see your favorites switch. So like oh, okay. while you're in the middle of the fight, you're like, okay, this is my infiltrator sniper profile, I want it, but you realize, oh, no, no, no. What I really want is my Vanguard profile for this fight, right? Or for this this area that I'm in. You just swap it, just right on the fly. Nice. So yep. Cool. Yep. So it's like you have multiple riders with you at a time. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And so you know, the fun thing is the narrative, 
the narrative sort of conceit for all this, like we, you know, it's important to us that these things are internally consistent, is that you have Sam, you have this AI who is sort of connected to you and helping you sort of manage all of these different profiles. Um, and there's a little bit of a story about how, how they can do that. They, technically, a Sam shouldn't be able to do that to you, but they can, so that's an interesting storyline that people should follow when they get in there. All these secrets. So many secrets. <laughs> so many secrets. So little time until yeah. we can discover them. And so <laughs> you see that, see as he charged there, he's turning visible. That's actually just a nice little visual perk that yeah, you get from that. choosing the infiltrator profile. Okay. Oh, um, okay. So yeah. That's why I wasn't happy being before. Okay. Yep. That's cool. right. Yeah. So here, we can change our weapon. You just, he just made a new uh, Matic. Bam. And you can see the, the mods. I don't know if you have any mods. No, I probably don't oh, have any mods. But you, that, you could put a mod in there if you wanted to. Matt made the Matic. <laughs> Not surprised. And then we could also uh, change out our characters here mm -hmm. just to keep it up, keep it fresh. The nice thing is uh, you probably heard them bantering back and forth. Depending on which pair you bring, they always have different things to say. Yeah. Some of it is kind of uh, what we call global in the sense that, you know, throughout the course of the game, they kind of develop a, a, a relationship. And some of it's more contextual. So they'll be talking about this planet specifically or oh. where we are at. But depending on who you bring, it's always a little bit different. And it's fun because whether you're out, you know, walking, uh, you know, like this, or if you get the Nomad, they kind of talk away at you in the backseat, comment on your driving skills, things like that. <laughs> Is there going to be, uh, I mean, obviously, everybody loves them, some alien relationships. True. True. Alien relationships, uh, Are yep. you going to be able to further your relationships with each individual member of your crew? Yeah, so everyone that's on the Tempest, uh, whether they're uh, a squad mate that goes with you on missions or whether the crew, they all have very involved uh, relationship uh, arcs. Um, I, I think uh, I mentioned it somewhere uh, recently, and, and someone's been quoting it back to me, but it's true, which is our, our lightest squad mate, so least least amount of dialogue lines in, in Andromeda is larger by, by dialogue line count than our largest was in Mass Effect 3, right? So we've kind of doubled down on that. And part of that's just the length of the game and how much you're in there and the amount of things that we want, you know, the world to seem reactive to. So now, yeah, now I see the radiation here happening. See? Here. Now, yes, okay. that's, that's a good example. So yeah. as he comes out of here, so this area is a safe zone. There's different, mm -hmm. in different planets, like on, uh, we have one called Elodin. It's actually shadow keeps you safe because there's so much heat there. Right? So when you go in the shadow, you're safe. When you're out in the, out in the open, you're more exposed, and it, and it starts to, your uh, life support starts to go down. And if you were to get out of the vehicle, his life support will go down even faster. Wow. So, yep. So and, not, but it's not punishing. We do, we're not, in, unless there's a specific zone that we're trying to, you know, gate you in for a while. Yeah. Generally, it's not something that you have to constantly be checking on, but it is a little tension that you have to kind of be paying attention to. And also a nice reminder that these worlds are very hostile and dangerous. Yeah, true. And one of the things I don't really remember the previous Mass Effect games uh, tampering with was sort of elemental effects, like weather effects. I mean, yep. I know there were, yeah. but you meant to like having to stay in the shadows because it's too hot. Are you yep. guys going to be doing that a lot within the game? Like, you're going to be playing with different environments and different sort of elements? And, oh. Yeah, we we try to we try to really make like a, another example is uh, uh, Vold, which we've uh, uh, so few people have seen. It's all it's blizzards and cold spots and things like that. So Vold is cold. Vold is cold. That's okay. how you remember it. It's nice. very easy. Okay. Um, EOS doesn't rhyme with radiation, but we'll figure that one out. <laughs> um, but uh, but yeah, I, I mean, we want each of the worlds to sort of feel like it has its own personality as well. That was one of the things I often asked uh, early on uh, when we were developing these: is what is the story of this world? I want to know what its story is. Like even before we talk about who lives there and everything, like what's the story of the world and why is it the way it is? Keep in mind that narratively uh, speaking. All the planets that we're going to travel to, including this one, were identified as these golden worlds from afar, like, you know, from the Milky Way. Sure. And when they got here, they went, whoa, <laughs> yeah. this isn't what we thought. <laughs> so something has clearly gone on here, and it might have something to do with these giant, you know, alien structures we've got here. But, uh, you know, it's just, it's, it's more interesting to sort of get there and obviously find you have to do something to make these places livable as opposed to, oh, welcome to Hawaii, I guess your job is done. Yeah, so, true. I mean, let's discuss the Nomad a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Um, Got Mike, a new vehicle? Yeah, Mike was... wheel drive? Yep, Mike was just uh, driving it up there, and you noticed that it was kind of slipping. It wasn't it wasn't getting traction as he was going up there. Uh, you can actually go into a six-wheel drive mode, which gives you much more traction. Uh, one of the other nice things is that you can actually upgrade the Nomad over yeah. time. So if you want to improve the speed, because the, the, the sort of six-wheel drive mode is a little bit slower. Mm -hmm. I find it's great if you're on ice or yeah. if you're trying to not fall off a giant pre <laughs> precipice somewhere or something <laughs> like that. You, it's, it's good for that, not just going up hills. Mm -hmm. But if you, you want to be able to, you know, get it going so it's a little bit faster later on, you can do that. You can also increase uh, just the overall uh, durability of it as you go. 
and it's also got a, a shield that you can put around it so when you get out of it it actually kind of shields you a little bit nice. so because a lot of times you'll use it I, I mean I do I kind of drive up to a fight mm -hmm. pop out and actually use it as cover right so so here's an example of the steepness of a hill I wouldn't be able to get up just on four-wheel drive but if I slam it into six-wheel drive there oh okay yeah instant yeah. It's we like even, a space hummer. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> and we, we even have a, a, a fun one, which I like. It's called like an agility mode that you add in later. Think of it like a sport mode. It basically turns off all the things that help you drive it. Um, so you can do a lot more donuts and goof around with it <laughs> nice. if you want. Um, originally, we kind of had that as a default, but then we found people were just crashing all over the place. So, <laughs> so we're going to go in here. Um, and you talked about relationships. You talked about characters. Mm -hmm. Being that this is sort of one of the first, first, first uh, areas. Uh, we're actually going to find someone who's who's already on this planet, uh, who's kind of important to us. You might recognize. Uh -oh. I think Mike's, Mike's got to do a little bit of exploration I first. So, yeah. I'm picking up initiative tech nearby from above. There, look up near that scaffolding. So the scanner scanner actually can help you also find things when you're in these sort of alien areas. You see, it's highlighted here, but there's also sort of like a little Whoa. indicator of it's what we're line. of yeah. what we're trying to find, right? And as he as he scrolls around. So, you know, you could be the kind of player who's like, ah, I'm just going to find it on my own. Yeah. But if you want that extra hit, pull out the scanner, see what's around you. And then it's up to you to figure, oh, okay, well, now, how do I get up there? Being that this is the first one, this one's easier. But some of these get, some of these areas get much more uh, puzzle-oriented later on. Okay. Um, in fact, the, uh, you know, we've seen, shown images of the remnant vaults before. And uh, a lot of those involve a lot of puzzle-solving, environmental sort of challenges as you're going in there. And your ability, sort of uh, what we call interface with this remnant technology, is critical to that. As you, as you can see, again, this is this is something our, our level designers had a lot of fun with, right? Because in the past, we never would have put something up here for you to find. It would have yeah. just been visual eye candy. But yeah. now, if you can get to it, it should be part of the story. And it should be part of the game, right? I love that. And you can see part of the view out there. I don't know if Mike can, you can see how vast the world is. Mm -hmm. Jeez, like can I, can I go all the way down there? Yep. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. You can drive all the way around that lake, and there's stuff even beyond that. Like, this, this level is, is very big. So, you know, we, that's what a lot of people do. They're like, can I, can, I, can I hit the top of that mountain? Can I drive to the top of that? Yep. Yep. You can. Yeah. We haven't even got to the area. You know, I mentioned the outpost earlier. We haven't even gotten near the area where you can put the outpost down eventually. Here we go. I apologize for any discomfort. The system seems unstable. This would happen when my dad tried doing this? Your father interfaced directly with the atmosphere processor. That proved extremely hazardous. These structures could reveal its control center. System remains unstable. Doubling our power input might accelerate the process. I'll give it a shot. Here we go. Here we Wait. go. Who could it be? <gasps> Back up. Literally. Oh, snap. Oh, oh boy. Whoa, easy. You've come this far. Just let it ride. I've been studying this tech for months. I don't know how you activated those glyphs, but you have to let them cycle through There's their our, channels. There's uh, oh. our intro. Oh. Before, we call it's them narrative right. actions now. Mm. Yeah. Trust me, yeah, yeah. okay? You didn't take it this time, but you can if you want. But who would want to push her off? I know. I, mean, yeah. right? I know. <laughs> who am I? I mean, it's obvious who you are. I saw the ship swoop in. You're a pathfinder. I was beginning to think the initiative just made you guys up so the rest of us wouldn't lose hope, but you're for real, huh? You're damn right. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's how it goes down. Yep. <laughs> are you for real? You were going to tell me who you are. I might just be the solution to all your problems. Oh, maybe. Wow. Looks like maybe Look you did something. That. System has stabilized. So you can see, establishing a connection. you know, there are these vast areas, there's lots of things to explore, but the storytelling is still critical throughout, oh, right? We want to have these moments where character focused, help move things along, right? What are they? Later! Just take them out! Uh oh. Keep targeting that one! They this is just a fun. taste. I know. A taste. A taste. We haven't yeah. gotten into this, the whole thing yet. Oh no, like <laughs> you you are well, I mean, when he finishes his combat, we'll pull up the uh, Pull up the map, we'll look at the viability. He's done a few things on this planet, but you'll notice that we're not very far along. And this is only like the first like planet too, so there's like <laughs> so much. I'm oh yeah, really yeah. Excited. And then there's the whole critical path, plus yeah. we have sort of hubs that you can, story hubs that you can go to, mm -hmm. and then the loyalty missions as well, right? Yeah. Um, and as much as, as much as possible, those are all interwoven into these planets or, or near them. Sometimes you're 
going to the moon and my first tangle with the remnant was a lot messier. There's the remnant. These remnant. The observer and assembler bots. They're all the remnants of something much bigger. Yeah, so there you go. Uh, but that's too 